bike right behind me, the Chrome Show. Bike build number 37. It has a 139 nightmare in it. I'm Jamie Lima, Moonshine Harley Davidson, Moonshine Horsepower. This thing is beautiful. So right here on the front end, this is the Krauss Moto KRT inverted fork using an Olin's fork. And it's the first time we've chromed one out. Customer wanted something, chrome to match the rest of it. We have some other trick parts on it. So we took a KRT all apart, worked with the vendors in America, because when we choose a vendor, that's who we're looking for, someone in America. And we wanted the touches to look like it did coming right from Krauss or coming from Olin. So if you look on it, we have Olin's back on the fork, we have Kraus on the brackets, just like it would have been before we sent it to chroming. And it, it turned out amazing. So it's the triple trees, the whole KRT, the fork legs. It is the bottom pieces Kraus put on. It is the radial brake mounts. And now that we went over the chrome front end and everything here, we are running a pair of Behringer radial brakes and we are running a brake tech full floating rotor. The reason why we like the brake techs is because the bobbins here are not what's holding your stopping power. The bobbins are keeping your rotor in place and they're allowing it to be connected to your inside rotor, to your brake rotor. And the difference is when you stop, the contact between your inner rotor hub and your outer rotor is right here between the two metal pieces. A lot of other designs, the bobbin is holding them. And what happens is these motorcycles are heavy. So when you start hitting your brakes and every time that bobbin takes the hit, it is wearing out the bobbin super fast. We get a lot of brakes in here where we grab this and there is an abnormal amount of tolerance between them because they're just worn. Uh, full floating rotor, you should be able to move, but you shouldn't be able to have excess movement. And these bobbins allow it to keep the left and right and allow the rotor to float. And the inner rotor, contact to the outer rotor happens and the bobbins are still loose when that happens. That way it saves the bobbins prolongs the rotor. They are our favorite rotors to go to on any of the Harley Davidsons. Um, just keep in mind when you're ordering rotors, we have them available on our site, shop.moonshineharley.com. Make sure you know if you have a hub mounted, which these are hub because they are the inner bolts. They also have, Harley has a lot of wheels where it's spoke mounted and your bolt holes are farther out. So spokes are farther apart the hub mounted or more narrow pattern and they make them both ways. Make sure you order the right rotors. This is a set of 320 mil. We recommend 320s when you're upgrading your brakes on a street bike. They do offer a 330. Those are race bikes only. You could put them on, but they're, they're more than you really need on the street. What you feel on the lever is it takes it from that Harley feel and, and now you're back on a sport bike and you're barely tapping your brakes and you have full use of them. So if you're going from the Harley brake to a radial brake, Little learning curve, first time you ride your bike, it, they're a little more sensitive, but once you get used to them, it's just awesome to have the confidence in that braking power. We finished her off with a pair of BST carbon fiber torque techs. Customer chose to go with a 21 on the front, and it looks beautiful, stock size in the rear. All right, on the top here, since it is a KRT kit, it has the KRT triple trees, which we've chromed. We then took and picked out a pair of 10 inch kickback risers from Krauss Moto. It has their bar on it and everything else is chromed. We did the gauge relocation and the extension bracket. We even took the perch mounts and we're able to chrome them and get Krauss's logo put back on them. So first time we've done this, this is an option for a build as long as you have enough time to allow us to chrome everything and get it back in a timely manner. Um, just adds the next element. Krauss offers black, they offer polished. If you need a pair in chrome, call us at the shop, we'll take care of you. This is a 2022 CBO, and the power plant, like I said at the beginning, is a 139 nightmare. But what we did on this one is we took a pair of our CNC game changer cylinders and we fully polished them. We took our normal monster heads, we fully polished the monster heads. We are running our monster manifold, Harley 64 millimeter throttle body and the Harley intake. Of course, we got the MHP Pro Mod exhaust with the fueling anti-reversion chambers on the exhaust pipe. This pipe pulls down the horsepower a little bit, 
but it's so snappy because of the anti-reversion chambers. It, it is one of our favorite pipes for a 139 and smaller setup. Now we have our brand new pipe called the Top Feel, where if you're trying to build a 139 or larger, or actually a 131 and larger with a big cam, it will release those extra ponies up top, and it could be worth more than 10 horsepower with that exhaust pipe. But this exhaust pipe for the tone to not upset your riding party, everyone riding to your right hand side, very nice tone, very snappy exhaust. We'll show the dyno sheet right now. So she made killer power all through the power band. Right off idle, we started our pull about 2300 RPMs and it's making 150 foot-pounds of torque. And it carries 150 foot-pounds of torque to about 6,000 RPM. So it's gonna have torque anytime you lay into it. Max torque is at 4,200 RPM. She made 163 foot-pounds of torque. Max horsepower on this setup was 173 and it made it at 6,500. If you look at the graph, it, it really starts to take off on horsepower right around the 4,500 mark and it just sings past the 170. So really cool bike to ride. She's beautiful, couple extra custom touches when we're in here building something. Anytime we're building the motor for you or we're building your bike for you, you have options. So we just took the, the powder coat and we're trying to match the paint scheme the best we can on the bike. So we have the collars on the push rods, powder coated orange to match. We have the lower rocker powder coated orange. We have a Baker grudge box six speed in here. That is the polished Baker grudge box six speed. The pipe is done in polish because sometimes we do those in raw. We have a suedo pipe, which is your ghost pipe in the back. This is a CVO. It has the long bags on it. So what we did is we got to fill the hole. If we had the short bags and the bags are short, it looks a little better of a two into one. But when you have both cutouts and you have the extended bags, we need to fill the hole. So this is the suedo pipe in polish as well to match the two into one on it. Olin's rear shocks on this bike. These are the 044s and they're actually on the Harley Davidson mount. That way we're able to run the tour pack and the docking hardware with the 044 Olin's rear shocks. Custom dynamic lights on the back of the bags. I like the CVO fender because of how they mount the lights. We've actually replaced the stock LED lights from Harley with a pair of custom dynamics. So these lights inside of this is the custom dynamic light inside the fascia from Harley Davidson. They're just replacing the light. The reason why I like the fascia is it moves the light out so you can see the light from the side of the bike and it's more visible to cars and angles. When the light is in and you're mounting it inside, they're nice and they work really well, but they're not as visible as this. Some of the new sport baggers, that we don't want the extension on the lower fender. So there are times we do modify this and cut this so it ends at the fender and we don't have the extension. Of course, we have to do that before we send it to paint. Or if we're doing it for you, we have to repaint it after it's cut. But it does give you that custom look. A couple different ways to do it. Um, we like the custom dynamics when they're inset. We like these as well. These are more visible, so it is a safer application on the back of the bike. Now, if you're running a bike that has a, a tail light on the fender, it's not that big a deal. You can stick the custom dynamics that go in the inside of your rear struts anyway because you have a visible tail light, but if you don't, I highly recommend these. And of course, custom dynamics, we got these on top of the bag. Just a couple extra lights on the back that you hardly see that make a difference along with the tag bracket. Corbin seat, everyone's different. This has the lattice stitch, but this is a Corbin. Um, very nice seat. We do a lot of saddlemans. We do Corbins, we do Laperas. It all depends on you and the rider, but we're able to get anything you need. CVO dash on this bike looks pretty. She's all chrome, matches the front end, matches the handlebars. Now the gauges, because they are silver, they are the CVO gauges, they look beautiful in that chrome gauge relocation. Now, when we're running a larger cubic inch motor, they do run a little bit warmer. This bike, customer went with the Ultra Cool, so we tucked the Ultra Cool up here on the left-hand side, in between the lower fairing on the front end the spoiler kit and the engine. So it's just tucked up in there, a little extra cooling while your bike is sitting at idle or running down the road. Wanna see the chain? We should probably show them the chain, huh? Chain conversion on the rear end. Hard to see, but she's got a chain on her. We get a lot of questions. Do I need a chain? And my answer is 
Depends how you're gonna ride your bike. If you're gonna melee your bike and you're full send, you probably need a chain. If you're easy on your bike and you're just rolling into the power, you're not dropping the clutch, you're not trying to wheelie it, a belt will handle a lot of abuse. Uh, real easy way to figure out if you need a chain, in case you don't wanna go to one, just start checking your belt. If you start touching your belt and you're looking it over and there's teeth missing, there's chunks missing out of your belt, you're gonna need a chain eventually. That's your sign that you're kind of using the bike and you're pushing it beyond its limits, then we recommend the chain. The chain has to be clean, it's noisier, it needs more adjustment. So if you can rock the belt, highly recommend staying with the belt. Man, thanks for tuning in, we greatly appreciate it. If you guys like our channel, please hit the subscribe button down there on the bottom. Put the thumbs up on it. Get notifications for when we're doing more videos. We're gonna go over some of the new stuff Harley's releasing, the M8 2.0 head, which is coming soon. And uh, can't wait to build more monsters with that guy. Have a good day. If you're looking for a build or would like to get in contact with us, the easiest way to do it is to go to our website. Type in moonshineharley.com. Once again, moonshineharley.com. Go to our homepage. On the homepage, there's tabs at the top of the screen. The one in the middle says Performance Shop. When you highlight Performance Shop, a drop-down will pop up. Click on the Moonshine Horsepower button. Basically, what we need to know is how to contact you. You need to fill out your name, your phone number, and then the bike. The more info you put on here, the more prepared we are when we call you. Your current engine, current parts on the bike, because we want to know what we can continue to use in the build you're looking for, or if you need everything. Um, what parts are gonna be friendly to the build you're looking for? And then building goals, what are you looking for? What do you want us to accomplish with your bike? Put it in there. Also put the time frame. First available, you're three, four months out. Let us know how quickly you would like us to get to your build. And then hit that submit button. Someone from our horsepower team will call you back. So it'll either be Aaron, Nick, myself, Jamie, or maybe MVO, Michael Van Orden. One of us four will call you back, our schedule, is Tuesday through Saturday. All the horsepower guys, Tuesday through Saturday. The shop is open seven days a week. And typically when you fill one of these out, it can be anywhere from 30 minutes to 48 hours to get back in contact with you. But we will. We appreciate the support. We appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for all the support. Have a good one.